In this demonstration, we will create a data grid view of the sales staff table. To start off with, I have a brand new application. I have saved it to my computer. And within there, I have copied the company.mdf file, which is a SQL Server database file. And I put that in the bin debug folder. For our directions, we are going to create a new Windows Forms application. Done. We're going to select the Show Data Sources from the Data menu. And then we're going to add a new data source link. So I'm going to go to my Data Sources menu, and that's over on the left. If not, you'll find it under View to be able to add it. So I click on Data Sources and Add New Data Source. It is a database. We're going to work with a data set. We're going to do a new connection. And it's automatically bringing up a Microsoft Access database file on my computer. So I'm going to change that to a SQL Server database file. That's going to refer to the MDF file. Now I'll browse. Selected my file. I can test my connection to make sure everything's good. And this is really verifying that the file and the data source type are compatible. So for example, if I selected Microsoft Access in this scenario and tried to do this database, it would not work. Um, but we've selected the right data source, the right file, and our test connection has succeeded. Click OK. I had to select it from the drop-down list. That's normally automatically populated, though. Click Next. This connection you selected uses a local data file that is not in the current project. Would you like to copy the file to your project to modify the connection? If you copy the data file to your project, it will be copied to the project's output directory each time you run the application. Sure, we'll say yes. Okay, it's automatically giving it the name of company connection string. That's fine, I'm going to go with that option. It's going to go in and retrieve the database information. So it's going inside that MDF file and reading it and telling me what tables and other options are available within. If I click on the arrow by tables, and I can see sales staff. That's exactly what the book wants me to do. Whoops. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to increase the width of the form. Well, we're already done with that. We're going to drag the sales staff table name from the data sources window onto our form. Visual Basic is going to fill everything for us in this scenario. So I'll first select Finish. There's my sales staff data. So I'm going to drag and drop right onto my form. You can see that it added the binding navigator and the data grid view. I'll expand the data grid view. Now this would be a lot easier um, if I wasn't limited to the width of our video. Make it as large as we can here. There we go. That'll work. And there we go. So what we should have now is our application at run displaying the data on screen. I'll save. 
you certainly should be renaming your form, putting a new text property and all that. We'll run. And there we go. It's populated. So one thing that I would want to change about this is the ID. The end user never needs to see this ID. It's like a social security number. It's irrelevant to the customer, even though it is the unique identifier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this. I'm going to click on this little arrow. And edit columns. I'm going to go to ID, which is already selected there. And in here is a visible property. So I'm going to select false. So now you can see that that modified the view. And when I run it, the ID will not be visible to my end user. And there we go. If I use my arrow keys, it'll go between the records. And we are in good shape for reading data. The next thing that we want to do is actually save data. So when they click the Save button, we want it to update. Um, it appears that it was added already, but if not, let me go to our text here. On page 623, you can find the code. Um, I have done this in the past where it actually has not updated or included the update code. Um, so that will enable this to update. There's our code to fill. And we have created a very simple database application without typing one character of code. And that concludes this demonstration.